So I played Destiny 2 Shadowkeep. By the way, there's no story spoilers in this review, so you're safe. An old friend came home. The moon is infested again, and the Vex are invading. So Destiny 2 has come to Steam, which is amazing. <laughs> I moved over from Xbox One to PC as soon as it came to Steam in Shadowkeep, which of course comes with all the benefits of way better graphics, if you have a beefy enough PC of course. But on top of that, they made everything except Forsaken and Shadowkeep free. So you can now play Destiny 2 for free, go through the main story plus the two expansions, and it just gives you loads of content to experience to figure out if you want to like lay down the 20 quid for Forsaken and 30 for Shadowkeep. However, one drawback on the cost side of things is that the Season Pass is basically required if you want to level up as best as possible. <laughs> this is because they've implemented a Fortnite-style system, <laughs> where if you bought the Season Pass, as you gain XP, you level up your pass, gaining extra rewards. These rewards are things like permanent XP multipliers, heaps of materials, legendaries, and even exotics. This Season Pass is included in the Digital Deluxe Edition Shadowkeep, which is £50. <laughs> So overall, if you want to buy all content for Destiny 2, it's £70, even though the main game and first two expansions are free. But my opinion, is it worth that 70 quid? Watch to the end to find out. <laughs> so, if I were to describe this expansion in three words, I'd use nostalgia, evolution, and customization. Let's start with nostalgia. So, if you played Destiny 1, you'll recognise the new expansion as the moon. Yes, we're already seeing recycled content this early in the expansion. <laughs> now, no spoilers, but as you can imagine, we're seeing a lot of recycled locations and enemies from Destiny 1, and it definitely succeeds in providing a feeling of nostalgia for old players, but for newer players, most of this nostalgia goes straight over their heads, which is a huge deal, because basically the entire expansion relies on that nostalgia. Without it, in my opinion, it's a pretty lacklustre story that feels very rushed and all over the place. Now on to evolution. The main story ends rather abruptly, and the final mission raises more questions than it answers. <laughs> this is either bad storytelling, which Destiny has a long history with, or they have something planned for the future, which will conclude the story. This could be either another expansion, or perhaps a new activity which will give players a small piece of story every week, similar to visiting the Queen in Forsaken or the Drifter cutscenes you get from Xur. This is but one example of Shadowkeep's potential for evolution, there is in fact a secondary storyline on the side that is slowly unfolding as the season progresses. This is based on the Vex and the Black Garden from Destiny 1. So far we have one new arena mode, Vex Invasion, and a raid, Garden of Salvation. But also every week a gate is being slowly built on the tower behind Decora, so something's definitely coming, though what I can possibly say. My last word... last word, get it? <laughs> My last word, customization. <laughs> With Shadowkeep comes a new system called Armor 2.0. Before, you used to be able to slot modifications into your armor, but who really used that? I mean, personally, I never bothered with it because the effects were so minor and you're constantly switching out armor for better armor anyway. So, like, what's the point in spending time customizing something if you're going to get rid of it in a couple days? Well, now this Armor 2.0 has completely revolutionized this modification system. Each piece of armor has an energy rating which determines how many mods you can put on that piece and the mods actually feel useful now, so I'm constantly adding mods to my armor unlike before or so. Now when you acquire a mod, you have infinite of that mod forever. It just costs a small amount of glimmer to slot it into your armor. So, overall, pretty good addition. Like, I'm now actually using this system that's been in the game since the start. <laughs> Finishes. Press the button when the enemy is on low health. They die in one really cool animation. Pretty cool. There's also some armor mods that interact with finishers, giving you ability energy or ammo, etc. The new arena mode, Vex Invasion. It's pretty cool the first couple times. After that, it's basically just a way of getting loads of kills. And it's pretty samey. <laughs> it's literally the exact same every time. But maybe this will change in the future. Champions, a new enemy type. In some activities, such as Nightfalls or the new arena mode, there will be champion enemies which require specific weapon mods to defeat them. Barrier champions put up an immunity shield that can only be pierced by anti-barrier rounds. Overload champions are super tough, but overload rounds will stagger them, making them vulnerable. And unstoppable champions are incredibly tough, but are weak to unstoppable rounds. You can get these weapon mods from the Seasonal Artifact, which is a new item that levels up as you gain XP. It allows you to unlock specific weapon and armor mods that, when combined, can be super devastating. 
I love these new champions because they add a lot more depth to the combat and they make you think more carefully about what weapons you bring to a Nightfall Strike. Because, for example, if no one brings Sandy Barrier rounds and you come across a Barrier champion, you're not going to have a good time. <laughs> also, a small change, but I think it's still notable. Law books now explain how to collect them. Yes! <laughs> I can finally be a mega completionist and collect all the lore without having to look it up online. Every now and then we're also getting new exotic quests, which I'm sure there's never a lack of content. It seems like every week there's something new to aim for. So I played Destiny 2 Shadow Keep and I liked it. I mean, I've played 60 hours already in one month, so it has to be good, right? <laughs> well, I think it's definitely worth the 50 quid for the added season pass. And by the way, if you're a new player and you don't have Forsaken yet either, Forsaken is definitely worth the 20 quid. Now, I love to read you guys' opinions on these videos, so please leave any thoughts in the comments section, and I'd love to get any perspective on some of the stuff I've mentioned today. So, I've made my obligatory video for the year, so now I'm going to call back into my dungeon where I play games and then review them way too late for anyone to care. See ya! Blopers. So far we have one new arena mode in Vex Invasion there. Every now and then we're also getting new exotic quests, which ensures there's never a lack of content. It seems like it's every week there's something a new